that LTT came to cap capture the Colombo had made an effect on the people in Colombo and some people were armed to fight against them. So they had never come. So the gathered mobs turned into the fleeing victims and burned them alive on the streets. And the landmarks of childhood mentions that a home that were set on fire and the blood on khaki uniforms mentioned that the behavior of the policemen during the course of riots. Most victims alleged that they did not do anything to stop the riots. And in some cases, they support the mobs. And here also the item has mentioned the three boys dead. So it points out the victims. It means the nature of the victims. Children have not have to be killed in which shows the real face of, of the rash inhumanity, which even did not spare children who had no connection to any of causes. The crowd looks silently to the other way. It talks of suggest that either support the inhumanity demonstrated or were powerless to speak against them. So the police to policemen look the other way talks that criticizing the behavior of people who enforce the power. And the writer has also mentioned the name of the diction of Bhotri. So Bhotri is the symbol of Buddhist religion. Although Sri Lankan people had been under the shade of the religion, most of their behavior is still puzzled by anyone. The lines questions and eye opens people on how the how they practice religion. So the neighbor's hand is a metaphor and suggests that the people who lived closely but yet they throw stones at their neighbors to, to kill them, which shows the long engraved immunity, although lived as neighbors for a long time. And the petitions and politics criticize the behavior of religious and political leaders of the church. Reports shows how some religious leaders supported to ask mobs to continue killing and some political leaders named mobs as heroes has finally revealed that it is not a common people who continue the violence, but a planned political agenda used mobs and thugs to execute an orderly plan. Lastly, the line is, Selanga burns alive. So it suggests that physically there had been a billion of properties set off on Saya, including people also, factories and houses. On the other hand, it has burned the long-held culture values and acceptance of Sri Lankan. Some foreign media introduced the country as lands of cannonballs, still, still the fire that set is there. There are sparks beneath the ashes. So this poem argues the people in this time and the future to things before taking measures. This poem also talks about the terrible and horrible experience that the major ethnic group made on towards the minority ethnic group. So I have to talk about some additional information about the unrest of 1983. After the colonial period of majority of government, jobs were held by Tamils. Although they were a minority of the country's population, in 1956, the Singular Only Act were introduced. This new act replaced Singular with English as a national official language, for which Tamil Pitsilangans felt that they were deprived of their rights. In the 1958 anti Tamil program and riots in Silang, Silong, also known as the 58 riots, refer to the first island wide ethnic riots to program to target the minority Tamil people. The riot lasted from 22 2nd of May until 27th May 1958. The estimates of murder range based on a recovered body count from 158 to 1500. Although most of the victims were Tamils, majority single civilians, and their property also were, was also affected, both by attacking singular mobs who attacked those singular who provided Tamil people, as well as the attacks by the Tamil mobs throughout the Batikolo and Yefna districts. The events of 1958 shattered the trust of communities had in one another and led the further polarization. Throughout the 1960s protest, the state repression in response created further amnesty. After that, 
more than 7,000, 75,000 plantation Tamil were, who became victims of racial violence and were forced to re recruit the, to parts of northern East Sri Lanka. The events during the program by the Tamil youth convincing convincing many the legal and means that achieve their independence would never work and armed instructions was the only way forward. Many such Tamil activities began to join various Tamil militant groups to fight separate statehood. So by the time a section of the crowd marched up various parts to Columbus streets when they attacked the looted Tamil properties and set them Allied members of criminal gangs were joining in suicide chaos. So although the violence began as a spontaneous reaction by single mobs who had gathered at the Columbus Cemetery where the bodies of soldiers were, were to be buried, they were later joined by the elements associated by the Sinhalese political leaders involved in the organization of riots. During the early stages of the riots, is it is alleged that the local police and the military stood by the did nothing. Numerous eyewitness accounts suggest that in many places, police and even military personnel joined the riots. So by 26th of July, the police and the army were out in the streets taking actions against the mobs, and most of the violence died out. The government extended the curfew to prevent violence from spreading to other parts of the country. So the violence was mainly talked about the Black July 1983. As a theme of the poem, we can say that the conflict in a form of racial violence. She mentions the idea that violence begets violence, that the singular started to attack our people and then the town people also started to attack. The violence between them were ignited by the political and religious leaders. The media are also criticized that they have exaggerated the issues of between them. Here the violence has been created by the religion and the ethnic group. So the man becomes mechanical and non-feeling and like a robot. He kills children and makes many horrible and terrible tortures to the other citizens. The religious beliefs of people has been humiliated and destroyed. Kunaratna has cleared the idea of country throughout the racial violence by taking the issue of Black July, which means that the unrest of 1983. And thanks for hearing me. Thank you for. A Thank you for our senior master Shakitian to give us a delightful presentation. Next, I would like to call Ms. Daronika to present on her topic uh, to the evening star. Uh, good evening to you all. I'm going to uh, present about the poem to the evening star. Uh, to the evening star poem was written by uh, William Blake, who lived in a uh, romantic era. He was born on 28 October 1757 in London. Uh, he was an English poet, painter, and printmaker. Uh, he wrote many English poets. In this poem, the, uh, to the evening star poem is a nature poem. Uh, to the evening star is an ode to Venus. Uh, according to a Greek mythology, uh, Venus is considered to be a, a Roman goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. Uh, we all know Venus is the second planet of our solar system and the uh, sister of the Earth planet. Uh, this is the uh, sonnet uh, by the Roman poet. Here the uh, sonnet means the poem uh, which have 14 lines. Uh, when we consider the title of this poem uh, to the evening star, here the word uh, to indicates the narrator speaking uh, directly to the evening star for protect them from the um, uh, night. Uh, now we look at the uh, summary of this uh, poem. Uh, here the, uh, in this society, uh, night is the problem. 
so uh, the evening star give a, a solution for uh, that uh, society uh, so uh, for that reason this poem was written by william blake william blake uh, requests the uh, evening star to um, protect them from the night and uh, was the dust with her silver uh, and uh, many other requests uh, now we look at this poem uh, line by line uh, in this first line the word thou uh, means uh, you uh, here in this word uh, the all uh, all the letters are capital so we call this technique is capitalization and uh, uh, praise uh, the fair haired angel uh, it uh, indicates that the poet uh, uh describes the evening star as an angel that is not uh, not a, a symbol angel that, that that is a fair haired angel so we call this technique is uh, apostrophe here the narrator uh, give feminine characteristic to the evening star here in this line the word uh, evening generally symbolizes the uh, prevailing program uh, now we look at the uh, second line uh in this line uh, the word now reminds the reader about the significant function of time uh, which prevails in the poem uh, here the uh, poet says uh, sun rest on the mountains uh, we all know sun is an inanimate or uh, inanimate uh, object uh, but uh, rest is the uh, human being uh, word but here the narrator give uh, the word rest for the um, sun so we call this uh, technique is personification uh, and here uh, the light is a verb uh, which is uh, expected to be fulfilled by the venus now we look at the third line in this third line the word uh, thy means you uh, here uh, the narrator says uh, the evening star give a brightness for them uh, for protect them from the night uh, here the punctuation mark is uh, middle in this line so we call this technique is shakasura um, um now we look at the fourth line in this fourth line uh, <clears throat> we all already talk about this uh, narrator uh, describes the Evening star is an angel, so we all know angel put uh, uh, the radiant crown. So the narrator says, uh, evening star also put on her radiant crown and uh, smile upon their evening bed. Here the evening indicates the problems and the bed indicates the world. So the evening bed means the problem, uh, the world uh, which uh, is fulfilled by the problems. Uh, now we look at the uh, fifth line in this fifth line uh, the word uh, smile is a repetition which emphasizes the narrator's demand for the blessing of the goddess and the draw us just uh, another personification of this poem uh, here the uh, why is uh, a word uh, which emphasizes the uh, urgency of the poet uh, and that society and uh, now we'll look at the sixth line this sixth line the narrator says uh, the evening star drawing the blue curtain of the sky uh, that means the sky looks like a, a, a blue color so the narrator says the evening star draw a blue curtains of the sky here uh, on the on the one hand silvery dew can be indic indicated as holy water uh, on the other hand silver is a gray color and it uh, generally symbolizes the sadness uh, now we look at the next uh, two lines uh, in these two lines uh, uh, shots and eyes are two more, more personification of this poem here the poet says uh, when the flowers shut their eyes in a tiny slip after the sunset uh, the evening star blesses them uh, with her silvery dew here uh, the dicks and tiny slip is uh, another symbol for death and the uh, west wind uh, is uh, uh, another way to avoiding the idea for death here uh, the narrator uh, requests to the evening star to let her west wind slip 
uh, on the lake and uh, speak uh, with her uh, glam glimmering eyes. Uh, now we look at the next three lines. In these lines, uh, the narrator uh, requests the star to wash the dusk with her silvery dew. Uh, here, the dusk means the night problem. So the evening star um, wash the, the night problems uh, with her silvery dew. Here, the uh, soon is a repetition which vigorously uh, uh, symbolizes the urgency which prevails in this poem. Um, here, uh, the uh, narrator says the evening star will disappear in the night sky very soon. Uh, so then the wall fresh and the line clears uh, come from the dawn forest. Uh, here, uh, we can see uh, wolf is a great predator which uh, indicates the uh, darkness of the forest and the uh, line is uh, Line is shining gold color and it uh, universally symbolizes the uh, lightness of the dark forest. Now we look at the last two lines. Uh, in these last two lines, uh, uh, William Blake requests her star to protect uh, their uh, places of flux uh, with her high influence. Uh, here, the sheep is a metaphor for the Christian crowd. Uh, finally, I would like to say uh, this is a nature poem and here in this poem, night is a problem. Uh, even start give a solution for them. It's a very nice poem. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Terniga, for your excellent presentation. Now I would like to call uh, one of the senior students, Aaron and to talk talk about her topic. Uh, good evening to you all. Uh, today I want to talk about the topic, uh, the poem War is Kind, which was written by the uh, Stephen Crane. Indicates the psychological tournament which the Dandura Institute with the issue largely his famous, his famous novel, The Red Bash of Courage, also relevant to the theme of civil war, uh, which makes him more and more famous during that days. Uh, as a reporter in civil war, uh, he has been he has seen uh, many soldiers and their unhealthy conditions in the trenches and their pains. And he realized what what the world is thinking that the soldiers are dying and it is their glory and dying for their mother country is very holy thing. But when we focus in each and every soldier's life, we can understand the pains and the and their loving one's pain. So we can suggest that this title of the poem is ironic and paradox. Uh, from the title War is Kind, readers immediately associated the word war to the death because it is, it is something as synonym of death and it's seen as a peaceful ending and entrance of the second possibly war a utopian life. War on the uh, war uh, war is war in the other hand is a glory and unsightly uh, with the only upside being the possibility of the joy glory either as a victor or having had a died of the dead soldier or the dead honor which rich, returns to the idea that this poem presents war as a synonym of death um, and it's simply uh, a slugger and in the first stanza, a writer addresses the maiden who's, uh, who's suggestive as an unmarried woman who loved the soldier who died in the battlefield. Battlefield is a place where many people 
uh, lost their precious life and here the image of the dying soldier and the pain of the person who is connected with him clearly portrayed in the first tensa. The riddleless force which comes along to the home indicates that the harshness of the war during the times, during that times, not only during that times, but also in every situation, the war is very harsh thing to remember. In war, there is no help. Most innocents are being died in the civil war without their knowing and with no, without the acknowledgement about the real war, what it means to them. War is not about, we all know that war is not about who is right, but it's about only who is left. So it's useless. The ironic tone, do not weep, uh, maiden, indicates that the poet wants to encourage the unmarried woman about her uh, great loss of life. And But we all know that the pain of the maiden was uncurable, and it is uncurable by the words of the poet. And it is ironic by the tell, by poet telling he's concealing the maiden. So we can conclude that war gives us an un uncurable pain in our lives. The great battle god is referred to the Mars, the god of war in Roman mythology, by saying that these men were born to trill and die, and little. Little souls, the speaker at once drove the attention or attention to the soldiers. And here the poet draws the image of the soldiers as a robot who is programmed to do what they have to do. And here the soldiers' feelings are caged. The emotions of the soldiers are insulted and they are used as slaves. They are treated as slaves by somebody. The sound of the loud drums indicates the harshness of the battlefield and alerts the readers to give the, to give the curiosity to the poem. These men were born to drill and die are facing uh, death faster than other people who are mentioned as soldiers. And every people in this world are born to succeed in their life and their lives are seems unlimited for them. But here it's ironic that soldiers are born to drill and die in the wars. Here the image of the war is drawn as meaningless and characterless. The soldier's birth is only for death, not for the country. The third stanza is similar uh, to the same type of the intimate setting as the first stanza. Uh, in, the speak, in this stanza, speaker asks a baby not to, care, uh, not to cry, uh, mirroring the request of the poem's opening line, who requests the maiden like this. After telling the baby's father uh, died violently and cruel, cruelly in a Jello Trench, the speaker ironically states the war, war as a not, not a kind thing. As the color uh, jello is often associated in, liter in literature, uh, the jello color is often associated with sickness and disease. The phrase jello trench is also indicates the unhealthy condition of the soldiers and it also sires the soldiers in America. Uh, mostly during that prevailing time, most of the soldiers uh, died because of the jello fever in unhealthy trenches, where the poet also suspected with the jello fever as a war reporter, as a first hand war reporter. Uh, the soldiers' plights are very, uh, well, very well portrayed through this uh, stanza. At the same time, we can tell that the war not only give the grief to the people who are involving in the battlefield but also the people who are off to the battlefield here we can understand that the baby loses its emotional support in the small age uh, during its small age and if it affects its life till its last breath so we can understand that the war didn't uh, come as a Sensor for the problems, it only uh, gives us struggles and it leads us to the life of the darkness. And uh, the people who are off to the battlefield are all also face this darkness.
uh, till the death of their counterparts. And when we move on to the fourth stanza, we can understand that we are entering in the heart of the battlefield where the flags and the blazers are flying. Then the poet states that these men are born to drill and die, which is the repetition, which shows the soldiers as uh, robots who are programmed to do what, what, what the people who are upon them are requested. And it also indicates the soldiers as the victims of the war and people in the society are seeing the soldiers as a, as a people who are involving the battlefield to get glory. But we only the, uh, only the people who are uh, involving in the battlefield and the people who are uh, uh, the report the battlefield can know that the soldiers are not the glory for the battlefield. They are the victims of the battlefield. And as uh, uh, Stephen Green is as a war reporter, he mentioned these things amazingly in the poem to educate the readers about the cruelty and the harshness of the civil war. In this stanza, the flag can be seen to represent the society, while the previous stanzas have been uh, focused on the brutality of the war. Uh, this stanza points out the cruelty and the indifference of, of the society uh, that knowingly sends uh, its young men to die to kill another. We all know that in the war zones, uh, many people, many young people, most of the people who are selected to the war, war are young. So we can understand that um, young people are the bright uh, light for the country's future. But here, the young people are knowing, knowingly sent to the battlefield to fight for their for their country. But it's, for in my opinion, I strongly believe that it's useless activities. It projects that the, some people are in favor of war and many, many people can't understand the cruelty of the war because of such mentality of people. Moreover, we all know that uh, young people, uh, uh, as I told you earlier, young people are mostly sent to the battlefield and in search of the peace, the country gradually loses its future lives in the battlefield and it's irony that uh, peace can't be given by the battlefield but many people think that peace only can bring because of the battles and because of the fights during that era and unless we don't have any experience in war zone we can't realize the unseen true face of the harsh war which is not kind but here the uh, Stephen Crane who is an amazing poet uh, who taught us what is the real war and what it means to them and the real face of the war for the unknowing people about that war zone. And some people convinced, uh, we all know that in our society too, uh, in the past days, some people convinced the youngsters by telling the war as a kind and some are believing that it is a glory to die in a battlefield, but dying for the country is not a solution uh, for the problems. I think dying for the country is not a uh, solution. It is only creates the problems and it's gonna only creates a crisis in our man manpower in our country. And it also um, leads our country in a undeveloping path. There are many alternative ways to get peace but when the country do battles to get the peace, it can't be, uh, it can't be the right option to get peace. It is only lead us to the world of darkness and put us into the put our country into the ditch, as Stephen Crane uh, wants to mention in his poem. The poem's fifth and the final stanza reverts back to the intimate six setting of the first and the third stanza. This, speaker implores a mother uh, whose heart is humble as a button not to weep. The comparison of the mother's heart love to something as an insignific insignificant as a button on a uniform represents the way of in which uh, many people ignore the experience of the individuals and the pains of the soldiers loving ones in that place. Here the mother's heart 
which is heavy with the feelings and the emotions of his son was uh, unsignificantly symbolized as a uh, sim symbolized characterized as a button which is in the ordinary uniforms of many people his mother's heavy heart which was folded with the true emotions was insignificantly compared to the small button in the uniform the soldiers and their loving ones uh, sacrifices uh, uh, through this line we can understand that the soldiers and their loving ones sacrifices are thrown and destroyed and this harsh truth was amazing amazingly portrayed and revealed through this final stanza many people think that even though when they die for the country it gives them a, glo a glory and many people respect them but from this stanza we can understand that there is no respect for them uh, they also uh, respected as ordinary people and it is very useless to die for the country the maiden the baby and the mother are well met uh, with the same phrase do not weep and the war is kind even the structure of the poem is something ironically shows the conditions of the society's view in the war in the harshness of the war and the cruelty of the war the poet strongly proved that the war as a cruel thing which can't be uh, which can't be the solution for our problems in this modern era many people in this society think that by doing wars and by doing uh, these things they can get a bright light but uh, only they can get the darkness, darkness which lead them to the undirectly ditch. The famous God says that war is a symptom of a man as a thinking animal, and the war is a game uh, played with a smile in the face, but there won't be the laughter in the heart. And we all know that this is the truth of the uh, truth of the war. Many people think that war is where many soldiers are bravely going to the war. But when we are focusing their life in the deep play, when we focus their life, we can understand that they are, there's no smile in their uh, in their whole heart. They 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 do battles not for wholeheartedly, but for the respect and but for the glory. And even in the in the in the last answer, we are, we are come to know that the uh, the their sacrifices also uh, thrown into the dish, and it's the society's uh, it's the society's situation in the times, not only in that at the times, but also in the times. And I think this situation have to change, and many people have to think the alternative ideas to uh, decrease the war and increase the country. The, and and we all know that the war is there uh, in the war situation there can there we can't see the unwounded soldiers furthermore uh, if we don't uh, end the war uh, finally the war will end us and it's the saying which i which which is touched to my heart and i think it is something related to this poem as well and this ironical theme was highly portrayed in this poem. And the war is not kind, but it, it is a hell. Even in the disaster times, uh, we came to know that we can get many humanitarian services. But in the war zone, uh, the humanity was caged. People in the war ignored the other people and they see, uh, they see others as their victims. And it is one of the huge mistakes of our human beings in war humans are uh, respected as animals other humans also respected as humans they are they are we can see the lack of emotions lack of relationship and they, all these problems are uh, come because of the war we may think that we can help the people in our country uh, from the country which is against uh, us by doing war but war is unkind and useless as it takes both sides lives even though during the war times the uh, there are uh, many sacrifices there may, there are many soldiers sacrifices their life they didn't get enough glory as well and uh, the people who are in both sides are ordered to 
kill. The poem and this poem makes us question indirectly of most widely accepted narratives about the war uh, that there is a glory in battle that is a virtuous to fight and that is the heroic to die. Moreover, a flag, a symbol of a national pride, uh, which is the, which the speaker introduced as the unexplained glory flies above the soldiers marching uh, marching towards the depth of the battlefield it in, indirectly uh, points to the speaker's belief that it cannot be explained because there is nothing uh, nothing rational about man's uh, fighting and dying for a symbol as a symbol of national identity and the soldier and military authority, the flag commands respect. However, here Crane represents it as a marker of total elegance. Under the flag, soldiers are taught the excellence to kill and drill, the virtue, the virtue of slaughter. But it is not a way to get solution for what they want. Uh, let's analyze the poetic techniques in this poem. This poem was written in the second pe uh, person point of narrative view, where the narrator comes as a lecturer to lecture the people who are uh, who don't have enough idea about what war means to them. And here the re uh, narrator uh, helps us to understand the unreal hidden face of the war, which is which is uh, which can't which can't be known by many people in this world. There is a irregular rhyming rhyming pattern in this poem to create the uh, to create the irregular feelings to the reader. And this poem was created in the free verse. The poem uh, starts with a tone of irony. There are many metaphors. For example, wild hands, the field where a thousand corpses like comes as a hyperbole uh, which draws the harshness of war. Battle God is an allusion which indicates the great god, goddess of war. Drilled, drilled and die, soldiers drilled and die comes as an alliteration. Humble as button comes as a simile to uh, I introduce the heart of the heavy heart of the mother as a ordinary button in the uniforms. There is a color symbol in this poem as well. The yellow color, which is associated with the sickness and the disease symbolizes the unhealth, unhealthy trend is condition of the soldiers and the, and the uh, yellow fever, which in the, uh, we, we, when, why that many people are died in the battlefield. Moreover, this poem is very rich in visual imagery as well. And as I told you earlier, this poem was written in a free verse. Let's analyze the themes, the major theme of this um, uh, poem. The plights of the dying soldier. The plight of the dying soldier is the main uh, theme which was focused and depicted in these lines by the Stephen Crane. By emphasizing that soldiers are made for dying and chilling, one can understand their sorrowful life, which is not like other ordinary people in the world. Many uh, many people are born to do and born to uh, born to achieve what they train to have, but here the soldiers are born with uh, born with a deadly fear. Here, as more soldiers in these poems are introduced, as they are born to chill and die. Asking readers once again can consider the absurdity of uh, of the war, concealing that 